Okay, hello students. This is the help video for part two of your final review packet units three and four. Once again, I'm only just giving you a little shove in the right direction for some of the problems, not all. So for these guys, this is an exterior angle. And the rule here is this, exterior, sum, remote, interior, which means for that exterior angle, it equals to the sum of the two angles that are far away, but still inside the triangle. So the remote interior angles add up to the one exterior angle in this case. That one's too easy for me to explain. Just align your corners. Align your corners. Okay. Says right here if. So when it says triangles are congruent, you are looking for one of these four. Side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. And the number one thing you have to watch out for here are freebies. Mark your freebies. So if you have a pair of vertical angles, you should mark them. A for angles. If you have a reflexive side that's shared, patch mark, side, and then a rare occasion, this would be a reflexive angle, an angle that's shared by two. So this, I'm only doing this first one here. You pre-mark what you have, and we're giving here a pair of angles right here, another pair of angles, and you have a reflexive side. And this one is what I call a hamburger angle, shard angle, angle, side, angle. And you go from there. Number one thing you want to watch out for on problems like these, of course, if you have two equal sides, you just chase down those hatch marks into the corners. You have two equal angles, two equal sides, two equal angles. Of course, also watch out for linear pairs that add up to 180. Watch out for 90 degree angles. Careful, that's not always going to be a bisector. And then the simple fact that triangles themselves, of course, uh, add up to 180. So that's for all of these pages. Taking a look here, looking at what's observed here, we have a midpoint here, a midpoint here as well which makes FE a mid-segment, which means this is a one bunny hop and two bunny hop scenario here, which if I were to compare lengths red to blue, it takes two of the reds to equal one of the blue here. And then if this, if this involved angles, keep in mind that would also imply these are parallel, which makes these angles equal if you had an angle involving problem. So the instructions for 15 and 16, which you want to keep in mind, it says each figure shows a triangle with one of its angle bisectors. That means this is cutting this in half. So that means these are being cut in half. So a couple things here that you want to keep in mind is that these green angles, one and two, so angle would equal to angle if they were green. 
this big blue angle, another thing equation would be that the two green angles add up to the bigger blue sweeping angle. So you can use the thing equation that is appropriate to your given information. So state oh, if, if they can be measures of the sides of a triangle, this is where you do eyebrow, eyebrow, smiley, you test it. I call this clown face. <laughs> so eyebrow, five plus eight has to be bigger than 11. Eyebrow, eight plus 11 has to be bigger than five. Smiley, five plus 11 has to be bigger than eight. And then you check and you see if all three are true, which that is true, that's true, that's true, then yes, it is a triangle. Instructions here, it says, choose sides of a triangle, find the range, find the range. So in this first one, what we have here is we have a nine, an 11, and a side length of X. And so this time your eyebrow, eyebrow, smiley is nine, 11, and X. So you're doing all three combos, nine, plus 11 has to be greater than whatever that unknown X is. 11 plus X has to be greater than nine. Smiley, nine plus X has to be greater than 11. So you solve for X here, and you're gonna end up with X is has to be greater than a number, and that number must be positive. One of these combos will be negative. The negative, you just check it. You don't use it. So X has to be greater than a positive number, but less than another number. So that's why it's called a range. It says right here, the polygons are similar. Similar means scare. Which means we're going to have congruent angles, but most importantly, ratios equal. Ratios equal, which means I can do one of these proportions. Here you've been given the scale factor of A to B. So A to B. And then you make a proportion, something over something equals something over something. And whichever direction you go, you must mirror. You match and you mirror. I'm gonna go left to right. So left to right, six to five. And then left to right, seven X minus six over 30. So always label whatever direction you go. That would be one way. I could have done this as well. I could have done six over my side length, seven X minus six equals the five ratio over my side length 30. That's gonna get me the same thing. And you simply cross multiply. Remember the key to multiplying is not to multiply, but to factor. So six times 30, five, seven X minus six. So step here is I would simply factor out that five and take it from there. Okay, so here it says state if the triangles are similar, if so, how are they similar? Your three shortcuts to similarity are if two angles are congruent, that is angle, angle, similarity. 
side angle side similarity means I have one pair of congruent angles and then side ratios equal. And then your last one is if I have three sets of sides where the ratios are equal, those are ratios that are equal. So one thing you can do here, take a look at 24, is you have overlapping triangles. We're gonna pull them apart. And that's T V U. One observation is that they share this angle right here. So they at least have a pair of angles. Now what you want to do and then you take a look here, watch very carefully, is we have here a 130, that's this whole side, and then we have a 20, you got to be very careful here, 156 and 131, so here is 156. You need to get this little piece in order to have the same corresponding side there. So, of course, that's 156 minus 131. You get five. Now, you want to check your ratios. You want to reduce these. Reduce here to here. Reduce here to here. And if your ratio is the same it would end up being side angle, side similarity, but you have to reduce that, figure that yourself. All of these problems here with parallel lines, the only thing you have to watch out for is match and mirror. Match the sides up, mirror the direction. So right here, we see that we need this piece right here and it's gonna match with the two. And this four does not match with nine, it matches with this. So we can't find this by itself because we have a variable down there. So instead we have to match that nine up and that nine is a whole side and you can get the whole side here. So the nine is gonna match with six. Now, call that X, match and mirror. I can use go left to right if I wanted to. Left to right, I'm matching. I could do small to large if I wanted, like X over nine, small to large, two over six. So whatever method you start with, you mirror it, match and mirror, cross multiply, solve. Again, match and mirror. So that two X plus four matches with 16. This 10 matches with right there. There's nothing there, but if you look very carefully, if you trace this out, this is 24. 16, you should easily be able to find that to get what you're looking for. Right here, each figure shows a median. That's a median, that's a centroid. So remember in a centroid situation, here's the property you wanna watch out for. You bet. There's a median. Here's another median. That would make this a centroid. This is a one bunny hop and two bunny hop scenario. That's what you need to remember about a centroid. So let's take a look here and see what we got going on here. We have been given C to U. All past your final. Good luck. 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 Good lu
That's going to be the comedy years. Yeah. All right, so let's color code this. So C to U is right here. And then we have here U to F, which is the green. So you want to ask yourself, what is the relationship between the blue and the green? And if that is a centroid, this is a one bunny hop and a two bunny hop scenario. So there's two ways you can look at this. You can say one blue equals two of the green or another way you can say it is half of the blue equals one of the green either of those will help you set up your thing equation with your algebra and then here's really important make sure you actually answer the question you're asked obviously one of these setups is going to get you the value of X. Yay, that's wonderful. But the problem doesn't actually ask for X. It asks for the entire length C to F. So make sure you actually answer the question you're being asked. 